Good morning and welcome to Holy Trinity Church Hall here in Warrenstown. We're glad and delighted that you can join us this morning in our online service. As you probably know, we're back to the church services. You know, we've returned back uh, to church service, but we are starting slowly from the church hall and with time, we will be moving into the church building. Well, as you can see from behind me, we've got a new roof, new lights, all put in place uh, with a very hard job from Winston Harlem. So I want to say a very big thank you to Winston and uh, the Select Vestry for putting all this together so that we can be comfortable uh, as we worship together here in the church hall. Couple of notices I would like to draw your attention to. Uh, first of it is, if you remember last Sunday, uh, we saw a video of uh, Beirut, people in Beirut. And uh, if you want to support uh, the work of God, you know, in Beirut, you can give to tearfund.com slash Beirut, or you give through give.net slash help Beirut. And also, if you want to support the ministry here in our parish, uh, feel free to sign up for um, a standing order. And uh, if you have got your envelope and you want to drop it in, it's always on the first Wednesday of the month between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. I believe you know where to drop your envelope. And if you need more notice or information about where to drop your envelope, you can get in touch with Brian or myself. You can send us an email or you ring the, uh, the, the phone in the rectory or the curatage. Well, as we move to the new season of Church Live, we are heading back next week with one service in the morning at 11 a.m. and another service in the evening at 6 p.m. So these two services begin uh, first in the church hall and uh, um, hopefully uh, very soon we will move into the church building. But if you want to come uh, for any of these services, we need you to uh, book in. Uh, let us know you are coming. And to do that, you can phone Jane Patterson on 077-84-00-4400. I'll repeat that number again. 07-784-004316. The number will be on your screen. And if you want to join in uh, in the evening service, 6 p.m. in Donna Cloney uh, Church Hall, you uh, please phone Stephen Dawson on 077-160-99170. Yeah, 077-160-99170. One seven zero. Well, one thing that is very, very important is your contact tracing form. So we would like you to fill in the contact tracing form, fill in your name, your phone number. Let us know how many uh, from your household, from your family is attending. So we need the names of all those that will be attending with you. Please bring that along with you when you're coming on Sunday, whether in the morning or in the evening. And you can drop that in the contact tracing uh, box, which will be provided uh, in, the, in both church hall. More, most importantly, if you feel you are unwell or you are undergoing medical treatment, uh, we will encourage you to please stay home and you can join in at 11.30 as we do, I mean, for our online service. And uh, if you display any symptoms of COVID, temperature, chills, sore throat, new continuous dry cough or new loss of smell or taste, you know all the symptoms, uh, please stay at home. And uh, we hope that the Lord will bless you and the Lord will touch you with his healing hand. Well, that is our uh, notices for the online service this morning. We begin uh, our service this morning with uh, this Bible verse, which you find in John chapter 7, verse 37. The Bible says, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. This morning we are continuing small series in the Psalms. Today we are looking at Psalm 63, where David speaks better than he knows about Jesus, who for our sake became thirsty. Jesus, the person who went to the cross for us and was vindicated in his rising from the dead. This morning, 
We hear King David speak of all that Jesus had done for us. And we sing with Jesus and we thank Jesus that because he became thirsty for us, we need never thirst again. Let us pray together before we sing our hoping song. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that through the songs that we sing and through your word, you would show us your comfort. You show us all your power and strength to bring about your promises. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord God Almighty as we sing together this song. Jesus, there's no one like you.
we have come together to meet with God and to take our part in the building of his church. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. Let us acknowledge our failure to serve him as he deserves and to return to the Lord with repentance and faith, praying together. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have often gone our own way and rejected your will for our lives. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. For the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I mean, now we're going to have a video, uh, of, uh, especially for our children. Uh, the video is The Temptation of Jesus. Come and see The Temptation of Jesus. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. Jesus was baptized by John, and God showed John that Jesus was his chosen one. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness among the wild animals. Oh, hey there, friend. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus didn't eat anything. So he was hungry. Satan came to him and said, Hey, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus knew God's word, and so he answered, No. The Word of God says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus passed the first test. <laughs> then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. Aww. For the Word of God says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, the Word of God also says, you must not test the Lord your God. Now. And so Jesus passed the second test. So Satan took him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. Satan said, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. But Jesus said, Get out of here, Satan, for the word of God says you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. <laughs> then Satan went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. And so Jesus passed the third and last test. A lovely video for our children, the temptation of Jesus. Well, we have got a kids pack, which you find on our Facebook page. We would like parents to download this kids pack and uh, let the children do their coloring in. And uh, whenever they finish, we would like you to take a photograph of what the children have done. And you can upload that, paste it, you know, or post it rather uh, in the comment page uh, so that we can see what the children are doing at home. Well, after this, we're going to have our kids' song, which is titled The Crocodile Song. And after the kids' song, we'll have a video about what is happening in Kajiado Diocese. 
um, kid song, the crocodile song, and then a video of what is happening in Cajiado Diocese. <laughs> I fell down by the river Sitting on a great big rock The crocodile fella could be dinner Cause here comes a hungry croc Sin is like a great big crocodile Sin is a dangerous trap Sin can creep up like a crocodile All of a sudden, snap! Not crazy, sees a log in the creek. A crocodile lady runs away, cause that log's got big sharp teeth. Oh, sin is like a great big crocodile, sin is a dangerous trap. Sin can creep up like a crocodile, all of a sudden, snap. wins forgiveness, gotta stay close to Him. Only He can set us free from mean old crocodile sin. Sin is like a great big crocodile, sin is a dangerous trap. Sin can creep up like a crocodile, all of a sudden snap, oh yeah. Sin is like a great big crocodile, sin is a dangerous trap. Sin can creep up like a crocodile All of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden Snap! Greetings from CMS Island. My name is Roger Thompson uh, and I'm the Partnership Coordinator for Kenya. Uh, and I'm just sending you greetings this morning to everyone in uh, Waringstown and Donna Cloney, to your rector Brian uh, and all our friends and supporters in the parish and the two churches. Um, just to say thank you so much for your prayers and, and thoughts and support over these last difficult days, over the last several months during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, I'm, uh, I want to bring greetings to you from Bishop Gadiel in Kajiado Diocese. Uh, and uh, I've been chatting to him in, in these last few days. Uh, and I want to just share with you some of his thoughts and reflections for your continued support and for your encouragement but uh, just to say hello and uh, thanks very much for keeping in touch i want to bring my greetings from uh, kajiado the diocese of kajiado kenya and uh, the greeting of my wife emily and our children and also the people of uh, the diocese of kajiado receive our greetings and uh, our love to all of you and uh, we, we are saying in our language, uh, Buana Sifiwe, that is uh, uh, our greetings. And uh, thank you so much for being with a part of us and uh, also receive our greetings. It has really affected the people because uh, uh, people should not go to work or to, to, to jobs, those who will have the job. Uh, there's no movement of people, there's no business of people. And the, uh, the Masais who are dominant of Kajado, they used to go to market and sell cows for their upkeep, but now it is, they have closed those markets, so it has really been a challenge. So it's hard and, uh, for people to make money then? I think it, it, it has been very, 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 very difficult because people went back to their rural homes and uh, they went there, they locked themselves down and they locked themselves uh, in their homes. And uh, they used to maybe 
they, they maybe maybe only to survive on milk and meat, and this is what they did okay. because they could not access uh, this other market uh, food. There's no transportation of food, so people really masses have been uh, uh, depending on milk and the uh, and meat, and this is some of them are forced to slaughter their goats and um, to have meat, but it is very expensive because you might not have many goats. We have started reopening churches, and uh, but you know there have been uh, a, a guideline which was given for the churches to be open. And there are things that they must have because the, the government is very strict on these uh, protocols. Right. And that we have, have every church must have a thermal gun. Uh, every church must have uh, a temperature check to, to check their temperature. And right. also, the neuro, the neuro, they the neuro, they they might not uh, be able to to have thermal because sometimes it's very expensive to have thermal gun in each church. So yeah. we tried as much as we can, but we have tried to follow the protocols, and um, it was not easy to follow the protocol. But now the church have resumed slowly and uh about 100 people and for about uh, uh almost 20 20 days and it is it is it is the church has resumed slowly but now the other people the the vulnerable people uh the elderly people could not come to church no that's the guideline then over 58 that's... years of age is that right yeah yeah yes yes so, so you can see now the the, the fifty the fifty eight age is really the church. You can see that's the church. Mm. These are the people who normally stand and support the church. Yeah. But now these people are at at home, and you you you, you can imagine the situation. But uh, uh, nevertheless, we've been trying and and carry them where they are. And uh, the vulnerable also people who have other complications in their lives. They are not allowed. The children are not allowed also to come to church. Mm, and uh, so you can imagine even the clergy who have attain the age of 58, you can imagine that yeah. the, 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 it, it, it is not easy because these are the protocol, mm. protocol from the government. And yes, t t tell us a bit about your project. We were able to assist with a donation that came in from one of our link parishes and you were able to, to set up uh, a food distribution project. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we, we, we really appreciate the, your quick response, uh, Rogers. I think that was a very... A quick response ever we have seen and we want to thank God and thank you so much but it has really been a, a very great blessing to the people of the diocese and especially those people who are in rural and uh, we are able to to give many families uh, food I think not less than 500 600 families benefited from the food uh, from uh, and a few churches also uh, got uh, got um, uh, uh, the soaps for cleaning and uh, other are able to get the mask and um, so people have really 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 we are we have really showed a big big uh, a good heart to stand with the people at the time of need so it has really bring an impact and uh, we thank God that, that the, 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 it has come in a at the right time and it was a quick response so we want to to say thank you so much to bali home thank you so much to cmsi thank you so much to all our, our partners and our friends for mm -hmm. that uh, really support we have really 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 uh, be blessed and we want to thank you yeah you know there are one place where we went and uh, we expected 100 people to come but the 800 people turn out and then uh, uh, if you, uh, there's a place where we expected 50 people to come, but you can imagine about 300 people came in. Yeah. So it, uh, it has been, when you say you choose the families, you say let this family benefit, but many people come and stand there and uh, those, who have been, those who have been invited and those who are not invited, so you have to, they have to share. It's a communion thing. And we are really happy because it is a communion when we give them and write the families and write the name which you think they are, they are vulnerable, they are down in terms of food, but they share in the village and it is a communal life. And yeah. we are very, very happy. Yeah, we're experiencing share. that too here in Ireland. There is a community spirit that has come up yes. because of the crisis. Exactly. 
yeah that, that is what happened in our culture uh, it's a communion it's a community you can't if you get a glass of water you can't you can't just drink that glass of water alone you have to take a small and another one about three people can take a glass of water or five so and this is what is making us uh, really to live together in the manyatas in the village because it's a communion it's a communion kind of life so when we get something we give not only anglicans but even those who have uh, other churches they benefited from what you have received that's that's great bwana sepewe sana amen jesus Let us pray. The college for the 12th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you're always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy for giving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask save through the merits and meditation of Jesus Christ your son our lord amen we pray for the church for all christians everywhere in our morning in our morning prayer this uh, we pray for david maclay our bishop for Brian, our rector, and for all who work in ministry here in our parish. We pray for missionaries and mission agencies all over the world. We pray for Kajiado Diocese. We pray for CMSI and we pray for Bishop Gadiel. We pray for the McLeans and Cameron and Alex Jones in all their work in propagating the gospel of Christ. Gracious God, may your spirit give strength to all your people as they walk and witness in your world. Unite us in your truth and love and help us to show your love to others. This morning we pray for all people, for poor countries that struggle to cope with the outbreak of pandemic. We pray for countries where there is war or famine. In our prayer, we remember people that live in Beirut, in Sudan, and South Sudan. God, our creator, help everyone to share all the good gifts that you have given to us. May those who lead the nations of the world be given wisdom. Especially we pray for Elizabeth, our queen, and all the royal family, and all those who work in our government. We pray that you endue them with your Holy Spirit. Enrich them with your heavenly grace. And prosper them with all happiness. Lord, we pray that you bring them to your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray for our community and for all who live and walk in this area. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we pray for our families and friends. May we be able to help each other just as you love and help us. In our prayer, Lord, we remember the poor, the homeless, the widows, we pray for the orphans, the single parents, and all families who live in the community of Donacloni and Warrenstown. We pray for those in need, for sick people, for those in hospital, and for those with any other problems. Compassionate God, give your strength and healing to all those who are sad lonely or sick and bless all those who try and help them in our prayer this morning we remember people in our parish who are not so well we pray for Bert, for felix 
Alec, Sheila, and Sylvia. We pray for Robert and David. And also we pray for the Copeland family in their grief that they will receive comfort and hope in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for ourselves and all that we will do this week and all those that we will meet. Loving God, we give this week into your hands. Be with us in all that we will do. May we enjoy this week and learn and grow in it. As we conclude our prayer, Lord, we pray that you grant our prayer those things, O oh God, that we've asked for and those things that we've prayed for. Give us grace, O oh Lord, to walk for and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let's bring all our prayers together as we say together, using the words of our Lord's prayer, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, before we hear the word of God, before Esther brings us the Bible reading, let's say this prayer together to prepare our mind to receive and to hear and listen to God speak to us in his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us faith to receive your word, understanding to know what it means, and the will to put it into practice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from Psalm 63, beginning at verse 1. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because you love, your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the riches of food. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. They who seek my life will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God's name will praise him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us declare our faith in God using the words of the creed which you will find on the screen. We believe in one God. We believe in one God who made us and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died, and rose again, and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who calls, equips, and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue as we sing together the next song, How Deep. Near. You were there. 
Welcome to George's this morning. Uh, you're all very, very welcome. And while you'll be watching this, we'll be in Warringstown Hall, uh, hopefully with a few more people uh, seated uh, this morning. And uh, we're looking forward to gathering again uh, and beginning that journey of moving from virtual to physical. Well, let's pray and let's open together. It'd be great if you've got a Bible uh, there with you as we look at Psalm 63 together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that through uh, your spirit, you inspired King David to write this psalm. Uh, Lord, we pray that your spirit would be our teacher. And we ask you, Lord, that you would be ever present speaking to us through your word by the power of your spirit, pointing us to Jesus Christ, that we may glorify God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, today we come to Psalm 63, a, a psalm of great encouragement. And as somebody said, it is medicine to kindle in us a desire for God, to raise our souls and inflame them with a mighty fire of devotion. And that's the kind of medicine I need. I don't know about you. I think it's the medicine we all need to kindle or rekindle our desire for God. But with every medicine, you have to be careful, don't you? You have to be careful who the medicine's for, how many times you're supposed to take it, whether it's supposed to be taken orally or not. But here is medicine, precious medicine, vital medicine, and we're going to look at whose name is on the label. So let's turn to our psalm. A psalm of David, it tells us in the superinscription when he was in the desert of Judah. And many of the psalms are, 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 are songs for us to sing. Yes, they are. But we need to be careful to see that they're songs of the king, songs of the anointed one. David, King David, is writing of his own experience here. But he's led by the Holy Spirit to speak better than he ought. To speak not of, of himself, to, but to speak of his greater ancestor, the anointed one, the Christ, Jesus Christ. So this is a song of Christ, of Jesus. And we sing it as Jesus sings it first. And we're like his backup singers. We're in the back with the choir singing away. And I think that's important because if we were to think this psalm was just about us, we'd beat ourselves up. We'd feel guilty. I don't know if I do thirst for God all the time. And if that were a guilt trip, then I'd be thinking, well, what's wrong with me? Why do I feel that way? I don't always feel that God's love is better than life. Sometimes I doubt him, especially when I'm going through a rough time. When I wake up in the night, I'm not sure that my thoughts just turn automatically God. Often they turn to my fears, my anxieties. What's happening next week? How are the kids going to be when they go back to school? What is the economy going to be like? What is church going to be like? And my problems aren't David's problems. As far as I'm aware, nobody's trying to kill me. So this is a song I can sing in my own. 
but actually it's a song all about Jesus. Look at verse 11. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. See, these words are the words of the king, but we're there in that verse as well. We're the, the people who swear by God. So this psalm is here to show us our king, to lead us to him. And then as those who are people, his people, we're to glory in him, praise him, give thanks for him. And so that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to take our medicine. We're going to be pointed to Jesus and we're going to glory in him this morning. Let's listen to David and see how these words point us to Jesus and, and we praise him and glorify him. And as you look at your Bible, particularly if you've got a New International Version, a NIV we call it, it breaks this psalm into four parts. And we're going to follow these this morning. And so the first section is actually verse 1. And I've entitled it, Thirsty. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. The title mentions that David is in the desert, in the wilderness. And it's probably when he was on the run from his son Absalom, who, was, who had launched a coup against him and had taken over the city. His son, his own flesh and blood, is out to kill David. He had crowned him by himself, by his own supporters, and was marching on Jerusalem. And David, worrying that the city would be sieged and there would be attacks and murder and awful things happen, he thinks, well, look, it's better for me to go. And so he leaves the palace, he leaves the tabernacle, and he leaves the city and goes to the wilderness. Now, some of us might know family breakdown, but this is serious family fracture. And the desert, this dry and parched land, seems to be a mirror of David's own situation. Stripped of anything, of all the comforts he had known. But what strikes me is that David doesn't ask for a comfy bed. He doesn't ask for nice food. He, he doesn't think of uh, the comfort he had in the palace. Look what his first desire is. You, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. See, it's as though stripped of everything that might have given him comfort. It's exposed his soul's deepest need. I suppose at the start of coronavirus, we're, we're all getting pretty complacent now, but at the start of coronavirus, do you know which was the most Googled word in the whole of the world? Prayer. Prayer. People were panicking. They didn't know where to turn. They didn't know how to pray. And so they were Googling prayer. It was the, for months within March, from January through to May, it was the most Googled word. When the heat's on with us, we turn to God, don't we? And David here, of course, he doesn't hunger for what he hasn't tasted before. And so as you look at verse 2, we see that David has tasted and seen God. That's why he hungers all the more for him. Verse 1 tells us that David has a personal relationship with God. You, God, are my God. That's why it's not his throne or his bed that he wants. He wants God. Now, as I said, these are words that we can make our own, but really they point to something and someone much bigger than us. See, David's life foreshadowed the life of Jesus. And before anyone else, it was Jesus who could say, you, God, are my God. From eternity to eternity, Jesus was able to say those words. Jesus, of course, spent time in the desert being tempted by the devil, where his heart for God was proved, but in one sense, having left the glory of heaven every day on this earth was like living in a dry and parched land. He longed for fellowship with his Father. He spent whole nights in prayer with him. And he could say many, much more than us, my whole being, verse 1, longs for you. And then, as we thought at the start of the service, as Jesus hung on the cross, he cried out, I thirst. Of course, he was physical thirst, physically thirsty, but it was more than just physical thirst. It was a thirst that made him cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
So yes, these words could express my heart, your heart, but in a much fuller sense, they point us to Jesus and to his thirst. And actually, it's wonderfully true that in Christ, I will never have to thirst as he did because he faced the thirst of the cross. Listen to John chapter 7. We began our service with these words. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. So we who have come to Christ have received the Holy Spirit. We will never thirst as Christ thirsts. And yes, we can feel spiritually dry. And actually the Spirit stirs up within us more thirst for God. We want more of him, more and more. He causes us to groan for God, for fellowship with God. And sometimes God does lead us into difficult times. And so stir up a thirst for him where people are lacking it. And so we can sing these words, In Jesus, you God are my God, earnestly I seek you, I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. So thirst, the second word is satisfaction. Look at verse 5. I'll be satisfied as with the riches of foods, with singing lips my mouth will praise you. Literally, the words in Hebrew say, I will be fully satisfied as with the marrow and the fat. You'd be a bit miffed on a Sunday if out of the Sunday roast all you got was the marrow and fat. But actually, in, in Israel's time, that was the, the choicest parts. And so we see David saying he, he is absolutely sure that his thirst will be satisfied. Quite a change from verse 1, isn't it? And why the change? We'll look at verse 2. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. See, as David fled into the desert, he was leaving the tabernacle in Jerusalem behind him. But he could remember, he could remember that in the sanctuary, he, was, he had been satisfied as he sought God, as he saw his power and his glory there. And I don't think David's talking about visions of God's glory. What David would have seen in the sanctuary was the sacrifices being made daily. And all that revealed, he would have seen the lead of the tabernacle and the curtain and behind it the Holy of Holies. And of course, he would have heard the scriptures being read out and taught. And that's how he grasped God's revelation of himself. His love, verse 3, which David said is better than life. For all that he had lost, there was something that Absalom could never take away. His God, this par powerful, glorious love of God. Absalom could take his life but he could never take away the most precious thing of all. And so David remembers there's nothing more precious. And so verse 4, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be satisfied as with the riches of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. I think these words from the lips of Jesus have more power, more weight. Think of Jesus saying, I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. See, Jesus could look back to not just the tent, not just the tabernacle or even the temple, but to the glory of heaven itself. Jesus has seen God's power and glory from eternity. He had known and enjoyed the love of his Father. And because he had known all of that, even in the wilderness that he came into, even to the cross, Jesus knew that his soul would be satisfied. He was sure of the joy set before him. And even now in heaven, Jesus with singing lips brings glory to God the Father. And he wants to lead his people, uh, he wants to lead you and me to do the same. To glory in God the Father. To see how wonderful God is. You see, Jesus had seen more of the power and glory than David could ever see. Because his power and glory is shown to us in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God more clearly than David saw it. Romans 5 verse 8, God demonstrates his own love for us than in this. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. And though, therefore, with even greater confidence than David, we should know that our own souls will be satisfied. We'll be eternally satisfied in Jesus. And so these words can be our words, even if we feel dry, spiritually dry, we can know that we will be satisfied eternally. 
we'll see his power and glory and love with our own eyes. We've seen it in the cross. We will see it again even clearer when we meet Jesus face to face. And then verses 68, resting. And it doesn't seem in right one sense to talk of resting. As David says, verse 6, On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. But David doesn't do what we do when we're awake in the middle of the night, running through our fears and our worries. No, he's thinking of God through the watches of the night. And there's this wonderful, restful confidence that he knows. Verse 7, Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. Even though he is Absalom and his army breathing down his neck, David is conscious of the shadow of God's wings, as we looked at a couple of Psalms ago, Psalm 61, an image of protection and perfect safety. That's why David says, in the shadow of your wings I can sing. And then verse 8, wonderful words, I cling to you, your right hand upholds me. It's coming close to the end of the age where my children hold my hands. It happens the odd time. Uh, Elijah did it a couple of days ago. But I remember walking all of our children to school, and as we're crossing the road, I would say to them, take my hand. Now, what protects Joel or Tamara or Elijah as they were walking across that road wasn't that they put their hand in mine. Their grip could drop at any moment. It was the fact that my hand was wrung theirs, holding, protecting. And isn't that what Jesus says of us? All the Father gives me, I will never let go. God says he will never forsake us or leave us. And as we cling on to God, it's not our hold on to God that keeps us. Our faith often feels weak, doesn't it? The wonderfully, the truth of this verse is that God holds us. And he has promised that no one can snatch us out of his hand. That's the rest that David knew, even in the midst of danger. And again, think of Jesus. You might think of the night before he died in the Garden of Gethsemane. We see Jesus in great fear and pain. Distress and sorrow and tears are like drops of blood that fall to the ground as he thought of what he would go through the next day. Not so much the cross as the cup of sin and judgment that he would have to take upon the cross. Having to face God's judgment on sin for us. And what we often, often don't reflect upon as we think of Christ's passion is the confidence he went to the cross with. Faced with all that sin, faced with the injustice, faced with the betrayal, he rested in God. And because he did it, it means that we can know peace and confidence even in the midst of all that's going around us, even in the midst of COVID-19. As we studied last Sunday night, Romans 8 verse 32 tells us, He who did not spare his only son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? We can know in all things he works for us. We can know that nothing can separate us from his love. So we can sing in the shelter of his wings, this wonderful rest can be ours in Christ. And in the last part of the psalm, verses 9 to 11, vindicated. These verses speak not only of his present situation. David speaks and speaks better than he ought of the future. He says, one day my enemies will be overthrown forever, verses 9 and 10. One day all my enemies will be destroyed and I'll be vindicated. He says, there may be battle ahead, but one day victory is assured. And that's why David can say, verse 11, But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. That's not to say that David is joyful when his enemies is destroyed. If you remember when Absalom, he finds his son has been, is dead, David is broken, he's distraught. And we should be never a people who laugh at the failures or the brokenness of others. No, the joy that we have as Christians is in God's judges, judge, justice, should I say, God's faithfulness, God's righteousness. A joy that all God's subjects will enjoy. All who swear in him, that joy will silence the mouth of every single one of us, every single one of them who has turned against Christ and turned against his people. You see, 
An example of that is when David ran away from Absalom at this moment, there was a man called Shimei who followed him, throwing dirt and stones and curses at him. And some of his men said to David, do you want us to sort him out? Do you want us to kill him? And David says, no, let him be. And in a similar way, Jesus faced mockery, even as he was dying on the cross. And like David, he made no reply. 1 Peter 2, when they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Because Jesus knew he'd be vindicated. That at the name of, every, name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2. As Christ's people, you and I will face scorn and hatred. In other parts of the world, they'll face much more than that. But one day, all our persecutors, all our mockers will be silenced. And we will share in Christ's vindication. And on that day, we will glory in God forever, sharing in the Father's joy. So this is a song we can sing. But we can sing it more confidently as we let Jesus Christ sing it for, it for, for us first. He's the soloist. We're the chorus. But he, want, but he wants us, his people, to sing these words with confidence. He wants us to know this joy, this satisfaction, this freedom from thirst. He, he wants it to be ours too. And so I think this morning it would be good before we pray together to take out Psalm 63 and read it in the light of Jesus. To take a moment of silence just to look at the words and then we're going to pray again as we close. So let's take a moment of silence first as we read through Psalm 63 and see how Christ fulfills this psalm. As we see, it's medicine to bring, a, bring us to God through Jesus Christ, the glory in all Christ has done for us. And then it's for us to sing in and with and through him. Let's read the psalm. And then let's pray together. pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that it's not an e our effort or devotion to you that makes these words ours. It's because of Jesus, his devotion, his effort, his death on the cross, his resurrection, his ascension, that makes it even possible that we can take these words for ourselves. And so we praise you for him. We praise you that he was made to thirst for us. We praise you that he became poor for us. We praise you that he is now satisfied as he reigns with you in glory, as he rejoices in you, and we thank you that we can sing in and with and for him. Please help us to do that more and more. Stir up a thirst, stir up a confidence, stir up a satisfaction, stir up the vindication that we have within our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing together as we, our final hymn this morning, Behold Our God. Tremble at 
at His voice All creation rises to rejoice Behold a God seated on His throne Come let us adore Him Behold a King Nothing can compare Come let us adore Him Who has given counsel to the Lord? Who can question any of His words? sinful men God eternal humble to the grave Jesus Savior risen now to So much brian for that word of life the word of truth which uh, we have had this morning can i remind you that tonight by 6 p.m uh, we'll have uh, our service uh, 
Uh, you can watch it online if you cannot come to church, but we will be meeting in the church hall by 6 p.m. in Donna Cloney, St. Patrick's Church Hall, Donna Cloney. Uh, for those who want to come, don't forget, ring Stephen and uh, let him know you are coming. As we finish this morning, let's say together the word of the grace, the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.